Hello, welcome to part 13 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Let's move to our 61st question. In the early management of patient with a partial peripheral nerve injury, the goal of the physical therapy intervention will be most likely to prevent Option A, nerve degeneration. Option B, spasticity and increased muscle tone. Option C, muscular atrophy. Option D, contracture and adhesion. And the answer is Option D, contracture and adhesion. Explanation to this question is the primary physical therapy goal in this case would be joint protection and the prevention of contracture and adhesion usually through splinting. There is no evidence to suggest that physical therapy can prevent nerve degeneration and muscular atrophy as they are the normal effect of peripheral nerve lesion. Spacity would not be present in a lower motor neuron injury. Now let's move to our 62nd question. A patient had a split thickness skin graft for a partial thickness burn injury to upper extremity. The surgeon has requested range of motion exercises for the patient. Currently, the patient is able to actively move the upper extremity through one third of the range of motion for shoulder flexion. Based on this finding, what is the most appropriate action for physical therapist to take at this time? Option A. Defer any range of motion exercise until the patient is unable to participate more actively. Option B. Begin active assisted range of motion exercises. Option C. Begin bed mobility training to facilitate increased use of upper extremity. Option D. Continue with active range of motion exercises. And the answer is Option B. Begin active assistive range of motion exercises. Explanation to this question is, differing any range of motion exercises is not a practical choice as contracture will develop post-operatively. Because this patient cannot achieve full range of motion by himself, active assistive range of motion is indicated to prevent contracture post-operatively. Although bed mobility training is a creative way to possibly increase upper extremity range of motion given the acuity of the patient's surgical wound. The patient would need more range of motion for this intervention to be more beneficial. Continuing with only range of motion would not facilitate aggregate increase in range of motion and would not prevent contracture. Now let's move to our 63rd question. A physical therapist is working with a patient who has multiple medical issues and has just finished chemotherapy. Which of the following test is most appropriate to measure the change in the patient's endurance over time? Option A. 10 meter walk for time. Option B. 6 minute walk. Option C. Timed up and go. Option D. Maximum O2 assessment. And the answer is... Option B. 6 minute walk. Explanation to this question is... The 10 meter walk for the time test addresses the speed more than endurance. By definition, the 6 minute walk test is only option that addresses endurance. The time up and go does not measure endurance. A maximum VO2 assessment does not directly measure the functional endurance. Moving to our 64th question, you are working with a cerebral palsy child. You notice that the child has great difficulty reaching for an object with one hand. The child prefers to reach for an object with both hands. What age would be considered normal for child to be able to reach for an object with one hand? Option A, 3 month. Option B, 6 month. Option C, 1 year. Option D, 9 month. And the answer is... Option D, 6 month. Explanation to this question is... A 6 month year old, a child should be able to reach for an object utilizing only one hand. Moving to our 65th question, a patient is required to physical therapy for post cesarean exercise program. The physician informs you that the patient is in day 3 post cesarean and need to be started on an exercise program. Which of the following exercise would not be appropriate? Option A, pelvic floor exercise. Option B, diaphragmatic breathing. Option C, leg slide. Option D, leg lift. And the answer is... Option D, leg lift. Explanation to this question is, leg lift would not be started on the day 3 post cesarean. 
leg lifts would be bought in possibly day 5, day 6 and beyond. That's all for today. If you need further clarification, check the description box and give your feedback in the comment box. If you like this MCU session, do subscribe to this channel for more.